Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. So, uh, dear students, grade 12. Grade 12. This is lecture number 65. Chapter number 23. Grade 12. According to your uh, reduced levels, we are talking about water pollution and water treatment. So, in the previous lecture, I uh, told you about the water pollution and what are the causes of the water pollution. Uh, there are many uh, factors that water is going to be polluted. Uh, accidental oil spills, leakage from cargo or oil tankers in the sea, tanker trucks, pipelines leakage during the offshore exp exploration, uh, leakage of underground storage tanks. So these are the factors which water is going to be polluted. Here is a water pollution and water treatment. So oil spillage and also animal uh, life. So we are going to be uh, see here many problems produces are poisonous. Uh, these products, many products during the industry. Yesterday I told you in the previous lecture that during the production of synthesis of different uh, products and industries uh, we use in our daily life direct way or indirect way so there is a uh, formation of the poisonous uh, substances so they create serious problems serious health problems to the uh, living organisms humans animals aquatic life plants they they uh, give the adverse effect Polycyclic hydrocarbons and carcinogenic, even at a very low concentration, is very toxic, very harmful for the all uh, living organisms. Marine animals are seriously affected by the soluble aromatic uh, fractions of oils. The spiral oil damage the, the feathers of the birds or fur of the animals and sometimes causes their death. Petroleum and underwater plants. When oil is spilled on the surface of the sea, then oil does not mix, it forms a layer, a thick layer on the surface of the water. Light is not going to pass, so there is no light that will damage the health of the marine uh, animals. So the process of photosynthesis of plants does not remain uh, much effective, moreover, the uh, concentration of oxygen in water is also decreased. Livestock waste dumped on the open land. I told you in the previous lecture that in the countryside, all these uh, animals are wandering here and there. So that's why livestock waste is going to be present on the uh, uh, earth. So sometimes discharge also in the uh, water, in the rivers, in the ponds, in the lakes, canals, rivers. Yes. So they pollute the water uh, on the surface as well as underground water. So they give the serious problem for the human kinds and also living organisms. So uh, these give the uh, these give the uh, born diseases. They give diseases. So these diseases are dysentery, typhoid, hepatitis, and there are many other serious problems for the uh, human beings. Also. Uh, uh, very serious uh, problems, typhoid and also uh, hepatitis. Industrial waste also very uh, uh, poisonous chemicals are going to be uh, discharged. Leather tanneries, fertilizers, oil refineries, petrochemicals, textiles, foods, sugar, paper pulp, paper board rubber products etc etc in these industries toxic poisonous materials are going to be discharged so these give the heavy metals in the period texture i told you lead cadmium chromium mercury arsenius antimony etc etc these metals are going to be discharged uh, and their mineral acids so these pollutants result in the contamination of water make it unsuitable for irrigation and drinking 
purposes. Well, then they are toxic. So these are going to be directly or indirectly affect the life of the uh, living organisms, all, not only human beings, all living organisms. So these heavy metals are high toxic, they have no uh, limit, self limit, no limits there. They give the cancer. Continuously, they are going to be discharged in the water on the land, they are going to be absorbed by the water, so they give the uh, serious health problems for especially human beings and aquatic life, fishes and this. So anemia, kidney diseases, nervous disorder, high blood pressure and also chromium. Chromium uh, uh, 6, reduced to chromium 3. Leather industries use chromium salts which have a positive 6 oxidation strain. Only a few industries have facility to to a best and treatment every industry should have. The government, the government has all type of sources, all machinery it has. So the government must use these sources to install these equipment to remove all the toxic materials from the waste product that product waste materials waste products when it is going to be discharged it must should be treated properly it should be strictly action against all the industrial units because government have a power and it is responsible for the health of all people living in the country. That's why proper recycling units must be installed. Because this is a serious problem. Chromium positive 6 if it is present in water it gives cancer. Why the cancer patients is going to be increasing day by day in the hospitals? You can see visit the hospitals and collect the data. Serious health problems. A few industry have facility to reduce the chromium positive six to give positive three, which is not uh, toxic as compared uh, the. Uh, chromium positive 66 and also it is going to be precipitated in the form of hydroxide so we can filter it, remove it. Okay. And there are also the uh, dissolved solids, detergents. Detergents, organic inorganic compound mix, surface active agents, highly soluble in water. They take out dirt particles from the uh, uh, fabrics. So they are going to be also toxic for the human beings if they destroy in water. Pesticides, chemical fertilizers. So these detergents are going to be give cadmium, mercury, lead and they have very adverse effect, very toxic. Pesticides, they directly affect on the water, so aquatic life is going to be uh, affected, just like antin, DDT. There are many uh, uh, kinds of the uh, pesticides, dichlorodiphenyl, trichloroethane, DDT. Dichlorodiphenyl trichloroethane uh, is a pesticide and is going to be used to kill the pest, destroy the pest in the crops. This is a, a chemical, toxic chemical. Chemical fertilization, I told you, fertilizers are going to be used in the uh, crops because to give more yield uh, according to the increasing 
population of the throughout the world. So that's why, in students, uh, these fertilizers are also chemicals. They have adverse effects. You can uh, uh, read because of sometimes, sometimes the farmer put the fertilizer in his field, then rain form. Sometimes water comes from the canal in his field, overflowing. These fertilizers, they are highly soluble in water, flow in the streams, flow in the pond, flow in the river. These pesticides, soluble in water, overflowing of water, absorption of the soil. Some directly animals, they eat grass. So they have a disadvantage for us. So dear students, uh, these fertilizers are also uh, toxic substances if we are going to use this. Then uh, there is a, another pollution we call thermal pollution and there is a, a heating. In thermal powers water is going to be boiled. Thermal station, power generation, plants. Water is going to be heated. So that's why uh, this water, when heated, effluents is released into a poorly flushed system. So that's why permanent temperature increasing often result and decreasing the solubility of dissolved salts. So these salts are to discharge in the legs, in the stream, in the water. So there is a problem also. So dear students, this is the uh, environmental pollution. Now I'm going to start water treatment. Water treatment. How the water is going to be treated? So we have a two systems. We have a two systems. One system is that the fresh water, fresh water coming through the canals, it is muddy water mud is there so we are going to treat it we are going to make a, a, a safe for drinking fit for drinking so that is why we have to treat it then uh, municipal corporations in the city they uh, distribute this water safe water uh, towards the common people in the uh, city this is the one thing second thing is that uh, we have the uh, Polluted water. Polluted water. Waste water. Polluted water. Which contains pollutants. Animal waste, human waste. There are many things present which, which is uh, very toxic in nature. So the countries which have this facility to treat it. And this treatment gives two things. One is the water, which is not fit for drinking, we use for the uh, irrigation systems. We put in the plants. We give them the plants for their growing. And the remaining residue we, we use as a natural fertilizer. We use as a natural fertilizer because in the, before 50 years it was used. Natural fertilizer was used. Waste of animals was used. So I'm, I'm not going to uh, give the advantage and disadvantage of the uh, natural fertilizers and also artificial or synthetic fertilizer. Okay. So we have to treat these two. And third thing is that if the country has more source, good source, good wealth, then seawater is going to be uh, treated uh, to give a fresh water and it is going to be supplied to the people in the city. So this, this process is called desalination. Salt is removed from the water. Desalination. This time the water. And there is also water under the ground which is a hard water. You done in the great tank. Hard water. Hard water contains 
magnesium or calcium ions of bicarbonate sulfates chlorides temporary hot water and permanent hot water you done this one. so due to presence of calcium ions and magnesium ions the water become hard so it is uh, unfit for drinking so we have to remove these there, there are processes to remove these this is the hard test and we, it is use, uh, useful for the drinking now. These are the uh, treatment, different treatment, how we make the safe water we use. Third world countries, under developed countries, great problem, great problem for using the water. Water, in the previous lecture I told you water, Either very poor uh, people, he needs water, she needs water. Rich, he needs water, she needs water. In the scientific language, we call water is a life. Water is a life. Where there is a water, there is a life. There is no water, there is no life. water so that is why the concerned government should give 100% attention to provide the good water safe water polluted pollution free water to the common peoples that the ratio of disease is not going to be increased the hospitals will not burden, overburden. The people will not go to the hospital. Because waterborne diseases, typhoid, waterborne diseases, typhoid, dysentery, and many hepatitis A, B, C. These are going to be generated from the water. That's why there must be give full concentration, full attention to provide the clean water to the common people. Many problems will be solved, many, many for the health of the common people. So industrial water treatment cover the mechanisms and the process to use treat water that have been contaminated already I told you by the discharge of poisonous toxic chemicals through the process of industrialization. So most industries produce some weight waste means dissolved water, weight waste. Although recent trends in the developed world have been minimized such productions or recycling such waste within the production process, they must be recycled. The poisonous, the toxic the waste material must be removed from the water or uh, through the effluent of the gases must be filtration. Filtration process must be given there. The gases they should they are going to be evolved uh, should not contain the highly toxic gases. So many industry depend process products water based waste stream. So there are there are uh, steps we have. Solids removal. More solids can be removed using simple sedimentation. Sedimentation. Put the chemical in the water. Put the chemical in the water, this chemical going to be a, a, react with the contamination, solid contaminations which are dissolved in the water, they set it down. In our villages we use this process before. Water which is muddy water and we, we put the potassium alum, particularly. We put potassium, we buy from the market, very simple, this double salt, 
just we put in the water you we ro rotate it so within few minutes you can see the all dust particles they settle down in the water and we are going to uh, filter it by using the uh, uh, clothes clean clothes then all the dust particles will be settled on the clothes and you will get the uh, clean water so this is a sedimentation double salt is going to be called so uh, this removed uh, by using celery and sludge oil and grease many oils they are because they don't dissolve in water non polar substances record from the oven open water surface skimming devices there are special skimming devices they remove the oil surface of water because accidental happen uh, by the uh, when we are transport oil hydraulic oils and majority of oils that have drained to extent uh, extent of also soft organics organic materials of the plant or animal origin in the usually possible to treat using extending a uh, conventional waste water treatment processes problems can be arises if the uh, waste water is excessively uh, diluted with the washing the presence of cleaning agents disinfectants pesticides or other antibodies can have a detrimental impacts on the treatment processes then hard organics synthetic organic material including solvents solvents paints pharmaceutical products pesticides cooking products etc etc uh, very difficult to treat treatment of methods are often specific the material being treated methods including uh, distillation absorption nitrification incineration chemical immobilization or lime film disposable can be used to treat the water acids and alkalis acids and alkalis can usually be neutralized under controlled conditions neutralization frequently produces uh, uh, precipitates that will acquire treatment as a solid residue that may also be toxic in some cases gas may be evolved required equipment for the gas stream toxic materials toxic materials including many organic materials uh, such as zinc silver cadmium thallium etc etc acid alkalis non metallic elements such as arsenic and selenium they are metalloids uh, are generally resistant to biological processes unless very dilute metals can often be precipitates uh, out by the changing of the ph values by treatment with other chemicals also so many uh, however are resistant to treat or medications many uh, may be required concentration followed by the filling of uh, recycling So dear students here are quick quizzes briefly describe about the oil spiders and uh, there are some various permanent water analyses article uh, this is going to be uh, only water waste treatment only water waste treatment uh, students the last topic we have a uh, green chemistry
give the different products form the products in industries so minimum top six substances should be generated they are not going to be waste minimum so the methods the methods the procedures the equipment the chemicals which being used in industry will give very small quantity or less toxic substances that they do not affect on the human life so that's why scientists develop the uh, green chemistry need yes great need effective in reducing the impact of chemicals on human health this is the goal of green chemistry reducing the impact of chemicals on the human health and not on the only the human all living organism means whole environment in addition many companies have found that it can be cheaper chemicals it needs research yes hire the good scientist hire the good scientist to research in the laboratories to make to develop procedures instruments and make the chemicals which are cheaper even profitable and meet the environmental goal this is a very important don't yield use the cheap chemical and it is uh, means very highly toxic last point is very important meet environmental goals this is the green chemistry profits derive from higher efficiency less waste products form better product good for the human beings and other animals and plants reduce liability the many environmental laws and regulations target hazards uh, chemicals and the following of these requirements can be complicated but green chemistry allow companies to comply with the law in which simpler and cheaper ways finally green chemistry is a fundamental science based approach fundamental science based approach addressing the problems of hazards as a molecular level it can be applied to all kinds of environmental issues since 1991 there have been many advances in the green chemistry in the both academic research i have already told you and industrial implementation for example spray spray this is the insecticide spray spray this is the insecticide manufactured by fermentation of naturally occurring soil organism was registered by the epa and reduce risk by insecticides in 1997 so this spends so said does not leach bioaccumulate volatilize or persist in the environment and feed test left 70 to 90% beneficial for uh, insects unharmed it has very relatively low toxicity to the animals and birds it is slightly moderately toxic to aquatic organisms but it is toxic to bees until it dries so what is the uh, principle of the green chemistry principle principle of green chemistry the aim of green green chemistry to reduce chemical related impact on the human health virtually eliminate contamination of environment through dedicated sustainable prevention programs 
green chemistry uh, searches for alternative environmentally friendly reactions media at the same time uh, strive to increase reaction rates low reaction temperatures the green chemistry concept applies innovative scientific solutions to solve environmental issues posed in the uh, laboratory so scientist paul d anstes and john c warner developed the 12 principles for the green chemistry in 1991 12 principles number 1 is a uh, reducing risk number 2 is minimizing the environmental footprint two so reducing risk in the laboratory must be we have to use safer chemicals the chemical should not be highly toxic design less hazardous synthesis methods design the methods which will not, not give the hazards not create problems synthetic biosynthetic methods let very less or little toxicity for the uh, human beings and other uh, environmental processes use safer solvents most up to date information green solvents they will give the good results accident prevention four there are four select minimize the potential explosions because we use chemicals in the laboratory there must be accidents in the fires some uh, uh, these uh, poisonous chemicals in the, in the human being may be put on the skin they damage the skin maybe fire takes place maybe explosion takes place that's the accidental prevention there are four reducing risk in the laboratory there are four then minimizing the environmental footprints waste minimizing and prevention waste which is effluents which is come coming out after the uh, making product so should be less amount so we have to develop good methods for this use catalyst catalyst is used to uh, give the small quantity of the substance to increase the Uh, accelerate the chemical reaction speed of the chemical reaction not stop so this catalytic process must be used reduce the use of chemical derivatives protecting groups of forms synthetic efficiency atom economy and efficient chemical process ensure the maximum amount of your starting material is used maximum amount must be used after final process it should not be remain behind no atom waste taking advantage of chemicals design for degradation reduce the effect of environment yes establishment of in the of in the process to control of pollution uh, prevention avoid formation of hazardous substances during the process real time synthesis use of renewable feed stocks use raw materials or renewable for feed stocks waste uh, from other process or products derived from the agriculture stream these are the renewable whenever technically or economically feasible encourage energy efficiency the realization of economical and environmental effect Uh, impact on energy use chemical process and development of alternate means to reduce the impact so dear students these are the 12 principles given by paul t anstes and john c warner in 1991 to reducing risk and minimizing the environmental footprint so students when the industrial 
uh, use these all principles, then uh, there will be minimizing of the hazardous chemical produced, low toxicity, no influence enter in the water, minimum hazards, then automatically environment will be more clean, or uh, living organisms much more safe. And when the environment is clean, all these living organisms, they are much more safe, very less disease is spread, no burden on the government to establish hospitals, save time, save life, save money, and live in the free tension environment. So thank you very much students, we finished this chapter uh, and also we have to think about this one, these very uh, practical things we have here. I am also a chemistry student still, I am going to learn from the books, from other sources. We have to save our environment, nowadays very uh, critical situation arising in throughout the world. We have to work out this. Administration, country administration must seriously think about this, these uh, problems to the save the life of the human beings, safe environment. So my last message is please save your environment and live free tension. Thank you very much. Inshallah, we will start uh, the last chapter in the next lecture. Thank you very much.